guys, welcome back to Unmedicated and Dysfunctional. I'm Kenz. Today we are jumping into a game called Seiya no Yura. Um, I believe it's in English, the song of Seiya. And I'm pretty excited about this game. It looks like it gets pretty messed up, which I'm way into. I am, however, hoping that this is not a Doki Doki uh, situation that we're walking into because that game that was actually really mess with you. It was really, really a creepy game. Um, after this, we're going to jump into a couple games that I am really excited about, and I hope that you guys are just as excited because these are brand new games. Well, one of them is a brand new game. We're going to jump into Chernobylite, which is still early access, so I'm trying to hang on to that one um, last so that hopefully we have as much as we can get out of that game while it's still in early access. So we're going to wrap up this game. We're going to uh, jump into this game. It is about a five hour long game, so we'll probably have about ten episodes. Plus some um, short videos of other short games in between. So I'm hoping that this game will only take a couple of weeks and it'll try and uh, fill longer episodes just so that we can get through it a little bit quicker instead of the half an hour, 45 minute episodes that we normally do. And then we're going to play a game called The Council, which I'm also very excited about. That is a choice based game. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this one. We might start The Council while we're in the middle of this one as well. So I'm really excited. Here we go. <laughs> This story is a work of fiction. The procedures and conditions described herein are imaginary. Okay, that was really fast. I did not have time to finish reading that. This work, this, oh, 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 oh. This is a work of fiction, uh, contains grotesque images that may disturb some viewers. Heck yes. Please select how would you like such images to be displayed. Do not modify, obscure focus of, gr of grotesque, lower brightness or obscure focus and lower the brightness. We're, we're gonna keep them just as grotesque and nasty as they are. Yes! The wriggling mass of flesh burbles. <laughs> what is it? Are you a baby? It's still gurgle, burb, bur burbling. Three such creatures sit around the table in front of me, slurping filthy sludge from their cups as they trade whines, growls, and sounds that cannot be described. Ooh, you're creepy. I like it. I wonder if there's actually any coding or anything in this that means something. Like, uh, like in Doki Doki, they did a lot where there were things hidden, so I wonder if you copy and pasted this, if it's completely random, or if it actually links you to other things. It would be really interesting to find out. By listening carefully, I am able to grasp the gist of their conversation and respond when it is required of me. This is necessary to avoid their rousing suspicion. You know, this jumped in really fast. I was expecting some sort of build up. Maybe you meet a girl, she's really cool, and then all of a sudden just things happen. But no, this jumps right into your like disguised in a group of monsters in this nasty room made of guts. I'm into it. However, these creatures look, they are my friends apparently. But listening carefully, I am able to grab Oh. What is going on? That was weird. I wish that I could still deny it, but I gave up on that a long time ago. Night after night, I went to sleep praying for an end to this nightmare, only to wake up each morning to the same twisted hellscape as the day before. I know now that I have to blend in, that I have to act like one of them. Such has been my life these past three months, and so it will remain until the day I die. You know, the art is actually really nice in this game. Um, thank you to the artist for, like, really putting the work into this. It's it's really appreciated, um, and it does not go unnoticed, so thank you guys so much for that. Judging by its tone, this one must be Koji. The one next to him, squealing more than the others, is probably Omi, which means that the next one is Yo. Though I can no longer see any trace of her once attractive features, I try my best to ignore the rotten stench of the excrement that issues from her quivering flesh. I want to see her. Show me her. Ooh, 
Everything has changed, or almost everything. By some cruel trick of fate, my relationship to the world alone remains the same as if an insane architect took the blueprints of my life and rebuilt it out of blood and gore. These monsters and I were part of the same college club. We studied together, ate together, we even went skiing together every winter break. Now these days are painful memories of the days that will never return. If only no one recognized me, I might have been able to disconnect myself from the world. It would have been comforting in comparison to believe that I had been abducted by aliens or that I had stumbled through the gateway to heck. But no. This is beyond a doubt the city where I was born and raised and the society in that I was part of for 20 years save that I and I alone can no longer see it this way. I just realized this is, you know, a, a pretty gory adult game, so I could probably say things like hell. I, I, I really, you know, don't need to censor for this one. The world as I knew it is gone. Whoops. Freak -licked. What gross sounds. Anyway, I can tell that whatever they're discussing is of no importance to me. I decide to keep quiet while pretending to listen. But just then... Ah! Look into my eye! One of the flesh beasts says as it swivels its bloodshot eyes toward me. What do you think? Don't. Ooh, that was a creepy audio effect. About what? I try desperately to suppress my loathing and behave normally, but my hoarse voice ruins the attempt. Oh, we're talking about this year's ski trip. You are coming too, right? A slimy hole near the top of the creature's writhes nauseatingly as it vomits some semblance of words that must be Koji's face. Or what I would have seen as such three months ago. Unable to stomach the sight of it, I avert my eyes and give the neutral answer. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You have other plans? Yeah, it's not. not really. These were my closest companions. One of them had even wished to be more. How many nights have I spent crying in loneliness, lamenting the friends who no longer exist? Oh, I see it's a classroom. And three months my tears ran dry and now there is only loathing left in me. Surrounded by hideous creatures that I can only assume are Koji, Omi, and Yo. I spend each day trying to act as I always have. If I fail at this, I'll surely be sent back to the hospital. Only this time I'll be locked away forever, no matter what. I won't let that happen. I mean, it's not like physical activity could affect your injuries, right? I'm not sure I'll ask the doctor during my checkup. That's it. I can't look at them or bear the screeching any longer. I jump to my feet, desperate to escape. Hey, Fuminori. A spray of stringy slime from a cilia around its voice box flies at me. I try to cover myself, but too late to keep the slime from splattering across my face like a yolk on a rotten egg. I'm about to lose it. I want to grab a chair, a desk, anything within reach and use it to smash the life out of this creature, ending it all. I barely suppress the impulses. I mustn't let on that. Something is wrong. However, they look at me. This is their world. I'm the outsider here. Like I said, today's my checkup. I've got to go. Struggling to put on a smile, I reach into my wallet, pull out the first bill I find, and put it on the table without even looking at it. I don't care about the change. I just need to get out of here. Now. Later, I mutter hastily and flee the cafeteria. Ew. I'm not crazy. Ooh. That was a... Okay, interesting. Okay, so the... Uh, okay. <laughs> so this is going to be interesting because it's already very hard to tell what's real and what's not. Um, so I don't know if this is what was actually going on or if the other one was, was what was actually going on because a lot of these get really demented. Um, yeah. Hey, says Takahata Omi. Why don't we go somewhere? We can skate for this year's ski trip. Whoops. Uh, Tsukuba Yo frowns at the suggestion. Skate? But why go to a ski resort to skate? 
<laughs> Give her a break, Sukuba. Uh, it's all she talks about these days. Tonokoji supports Omi with a laugh. Her impromptu suggestions are nothing new, and it's Koji's role as her boyfriend to provide backup. They're a good match for each other. Yo thinks sometimes it makes her jealous. I mean, she's seriously. <laughs> Ever going to skating before I took her the other day? Hey, is it really that strange? Not many people start skating in their 20s, you know. I was scared when I was little. Those shoes look like big knives. She's adorable. But you picked it up just like that? It's pretty amazing, Omi. It's a lot like skiing. You keep your weight forward and use the angle of your shoes to steer. You made it sound easy. I figured I should give it a try. And it was fun. But you picked it up just like that? That's pretty amazing, Omi. It's... Uh, oh, we already read that. I was really confused for a second. So it was a date. Yo feels a stab of envy. Koji and Omi enjoy their time together as normal lovers do. That's certainly not something that should make her jealous. It's just that her luck in love has been bad. Oh, well, I want to see Omi skate too. Yo keeps her voice upbeat trying to cover up her disquiet. She knows that it's wrong to envy her friends. She too would be spending time with the man she admires, if not for the terrible tragedy that befell him. His is true misfortune. Her bad luck doesn't begin to compare. <gasps> These characters look like the people from... Ah, oh, Code Lyoko! They look like, that looks like one of the characters from Code Lyoko. So how about it? If we make the next ski trip a skating trip too, it'll be twice as fun. So how about it? Oh, hey, whenever it flashes like that makes me think it started all the way over. That's confusing. But you can skate at a skating rink, can't you? Why go all the way to a ski resort? I don't want to skate indoors. I want to skate outside on the lake or something. That sounds fun, but won't it be crowded? While speaking, Yo sneaks a sideways glance at the young man sitting next to her. Although the conversation has involved only three people so far, there are in fact two couples at the cafeteria table. Yo's boyfriend, though there's still some doubt over whether he could be called that, is beside her, as silent and expressionless as a statue. Ah, Fuminori. What do you think? Perhaps Koji sent Yo's plan in the usual quiet, considerate way. Oh, about what? The cause of Yo's distress, Saki Saka... A uh, Fuminori responds to Koji's sudden query with a vague, mumbled question of his own. Um, we're talking about the winter ski trip. You're coming too, right? Koji speaks gingerly at the, as though probing a tumor. A few months ago, he would not have hesitated to rebuke Fuminori for his attitude. Their long acquaintance had forged a strong and honest friendship, but now? I don't know. Fuminori responds bluntly his downcast eyes and sullen demeanor making it clear that he has no desire to break his silence. You have plans? Yeah, Not really. Even Koji Fuminora's best friend cannot communicate with him as before. What hope does Yo have of breaking through his shell? The scars left behind by the events of the late summer day are still deep all these months later. Each one of our f the four bears them. Not only Fuminori. Nah. I mean, it's not like physical activity could affect your injuries, right? Not sure I'll ask the doctor during my checkup. As though that answer's drained the last of his patience, Fuminori bolts out of his chair. Hey, Fuminori! Even Koji can't keep his voice from raising, as he tries to stop Fuminori from leaving. Fuminori reacts swiftly, throwing his hand over his face as though to shield himself from something terrifying. Maybe the spit flew inadvertently from Koji's mouth, but that happens sometimes. Fuminori's reaction is beyond the pale. Like I said, Fuminori snaps, making no attempt to relieve the discomfort of his friend. Today's my checkup. I have to go. Even as he tosses money on the table to pay for his coffee, he acts like he's touching something filthy. Later. Ew. Fuminori stalks out of the cafe- Stalks? I've never heard that word used that way. Out of the cafeteria, almost as if he's running away. 
Cloaked in heavy silence, the remaining three lower their gaze to the table, where the abandoned 10,000 yen bill was forlornly. Fuminori's coffee is untouched. I can't take this anymore, Omi says with a sigh, but Koji shakes his head reproaches, reproachfully. Fuminori just needs a little more time. But it's been three months. What's with the attitude? I feel like I'm going crazy hanging around him. Fuminori just needs a little more time, but it's been three months. Oh, ah! Hey, I don't understand what's going on though through... What's going through what he's going... Oh! Hey, I don't understand what he's going through either. I don't think any of us can. Can you imagine losing your whole family like that? That'd, that'd screw anyone up. I could have happened to anyone. A tractor trailer flipped over on the highway, crushing the Sakisaka family car into twisted scrap. They said it had been difficult to tell the bodies of Fuminori's parents apart. For a while, it had looked as if there was no hope for Fuminori either. It was nothing of sh uh, short of a miracle that he was able to leave the hospital and return to normal life. He was worse when we went to see him in the hospital, remember? He was terrified of us, like he didn't know who we were. He even had to be tied to the bed and freaked out so bad. And I'm just glad he's made it this far. There's still something strange about him. What's with the way he looks at us? It's like we're not even human. Cut it out, Yomi. Koji says forcefully, probably less out of empathy for his friends than out of consideration for Yo. While Koji's kindness makes her happy, Yo also knows that she mustn't take advantage of it. Fuminori is the victim, just as Koji said. He's the one who most deserves sympathy. Yo's feelings for Fuminori are her problem, and no one else's. She doesn't blame Fuminori for not giving her an answer after she worked up the courage to ask him out. In fact, she thinks even more fondly of him for taking the time to consider than she would have done had he treated their relationship casually. Apparently, the fact that Fuminori did not reject her was enough to make, her, make them a couple in Koji and Omi's eyes. They've had plenty of fun, still Yo and Fuminori's expense since. The truth of it, though, is that he still hasn't given her an answer. After revealing her feelings to him, Yo didn't see Fuminori again until a, later, a week later. And then she could only stare at his broken body through the window of the ICU. And when he finally released, after 50 days that seemed an eternity, he was somehow different. She started to doubt that he even remembers what she confessed to him before the accident. Now winter is coming and her feelings hang forgotten in the cold, lonely air. Da dang da da, -da dang Alright, we're gonna stop here. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I know this is uh, shorter than I said it would be. Um, but unfortunately, I am all out of time. So thank you guys so much uh, for liking, commenting, subscribing. All of that is fantastic. You guys are really great. And I do appreciate every single one of you. So for the new subscribers, welcome to the family. We appreciate you and we love you. For everyone who's been here for a while, thank you so much for sticking around. We love you. We love you all. You guys are all fantastic, and I wouldn't be here without you. So thank you so much again. As always, I will see you in the next one. Bye!